we are here today to interview Paul Claval. I am uh, David Houston of the University of California in Berkeley, United States. Professor Claval uh, is very well known in the Anglophone world uh, because his books have been translated into many languages. He has um, uh, lectured quite widely throughout the uh, Anglophone world and he has made a point always of uh, keeping up with the literature in uh, that part of the world outside France. And so it's a great pleasure today to interview you, Paul, and to like to start off with uh, uh, some uh, idea from you about what there was significant in your formative experiences in France. Oh yes, I was raised in a small city in southwestern France and in fact I attended school in a small village and so I have memories of the time when the people were plowing at the low pace of oxen and it was certainly a very different experience of nowadays. I enjoyed also the experiences with my father, who was an inspector of weight and scales, and have good memories of the marketplaces of southern central massif, with the possibility to uh, spend a lot of time bargaining, and so I think that are important experiences for a young man, but I'm not sure that it's so important in my own uh, idea of geography, but as far as can remember of the desire to be a geographer and I was spending a lot of time looking at maps and one of my dream was to settle later on in a small city in a country which was for me a wonderful one that is New Zealand and for yeah. me paradise was certainly in Greymouth, New Zealand and it was very much disappointed when I visited Greymouth 40 years later. <laughs> I know that feeling, exactly the same. Yes. So um, what about though your um, formative um, steps in geography or towards uh, becoming interested in geography? Yes, I attended the university in Toulouse and I got the classical formation for geographers, that is geography and history. But at the same time, I have different experiences. I spent one year studying mathematics. I, have not, I am not a good mathematician, but it freed me of any fetishism. Uh, about mathematics and I think it was very useful for me at the time of the quantitative revolution. I knew that it was possible for me to use these techniques but I knew that there were only techniques. At the same time I got training for two years in the history of French literature and I think that there were certainly very good experiences because the teacher I had at that time was a wonderful teacher of the history of ideas and uh, I got the feeling that it was important to look at the roots of what you are looking at if you want to understand what is really significant. So I think that my experiences in mathematics, my experiences in um, the history of ideas were certainly as important as the classical uh, formation I got in geography and in history. But then when you came very fully into geography in uh, Besançon or um, it, at least in the 60s when you were writing your first works uh, about Vidal and the tradition and the new geography and so on, what is, what is your recollection of the spirit of the times then as far as geography and related subjects is concerned? Yes, my recollection is that it was a time when the French geographers were very proud of their achievements and the young geographers, as I was, were a bit critical and a bit skeptical about what has been done during the last 30 years. During the 1950s, the late 1950s, I discovered economics and I spent four years studying economics 
after leaving the university. I have an interest in um, macroeconomy and microeconomics, and I was reading what has been produced by some French economists in the field of location theory. And I tried, I decided to import in geography a part of what has been done in economics and more specifically, specifically in location theory. And so I discovered that my interests were quite the same than the interest of people like Brian Berry at that time. And so I thought that it was good to have an experience of um, developing relations between geography and uh, economics, but at the same time have also experiences of teaching geography. And for the students, the feeling I had of something which was imperfect was confirmed, it was quite evident for the students, spe specifically for the non-geographer students, that human geography, as it was taught, in the French university was not good for them. They do not understand the relations between the different parts of the subject. And I discovered that the best way to give them the sense of the usefulness of the interest of geography was just to tell them the way it was built. And so it was possible to understand the reason for which at the, deep, at the beginning of the 20th century the idea of genre de vie, of way of life, was so important and for what reason it ceased to be significant. But I, I, I think that for many students, since it had ceased to be significant, there was only criticism and I think that it was possible to show them that something has to be saved out of this old lore, out of the Vidalian tradition. And so at the same time, I began to be critical to the Vidalian geography which has been practiced in the 1940s and 1950s. And I was in a way, in some way, moving back towards what was really practiced at the time of Vidal de la Blache. I think that it, it was a rediscovery at that time of the curiosities and of the aims of geography at the beginning of this century. Yes. Well, I think that, uh, that illustrates what I've always taken to be uh, one of your gifts, that is to combine uh, reference to tradition with uh, change and to be some kind of link, as I see it, between the French tradition of former times and uh, new developments. But how did it work in the 1960s, was it, which was a very troubled period in French universities? I think that in the 1960s it was difficult to have these ideas accepted because the French geographical establishment was rather conservative. But at the same time, it was possible to have um, the freedom to launch new uh, avenues. It was perhaps not the best way to have consideration, but there was enough freedom in the system for young people to develop new ideas. So it was not so bad. Yes. It was certainly difficult for me and for uh, perhaps uh, 20 or 30 young geographers, but we could develop new ideas. The main problem was the lack of desire of change in the majority of uh, young geographers. It was much more a problem of mentality than a problem of control by the older part of the older geographers. And I think that 1968, the students' upheaval was certainly important because it allows for more freedom. And I think that after 1968, new orientations in quantitative geography became to be significant. At the beginning of the 1960s, people with an interest in the new geography are mainly interested in theory. And so they look towards economics and have no interest in the kind of empirical developments which were prominent in the 1940s and 1950s. As a result, the quantitative revolution in France 
in France was delayed until the, the end of the 1960s and the beginning of the 1970s. Yes. So I think it's one of the major differences and I think that they are more interested in the theoretical roots of human geography than in the ways to develop new methodologies. Some interest, but it was not essential. It was, it's certainly one of the differences between American or English and French geography at that time. Yes. Well, that leads me to uh, uh, the next question, which was, I gather that about that time in the early 70s, uh, you made your major debut, shall we say, into the English language and into uh, America, uh, the Anglo-Saxon world. I mean, you've become very much known since then um, in the Anglophone world, but do I understand that about 1972 you had a, an experience which yes, uh, changed your true. life? Yes, I attended the international meeting in Montreal at that time, and Anne Bertimer told me that David Soffer will be glad to receive me, and so I decided to spend a weekend in Syracuse. And I came to Syracuse on the Friday morning, and David Soffer met me, he was very kind, and we visited his university, his office, his, his library on the Indian census, and then at two o'clock he pushed door and there were about 40 students in the door in the room and he told me here are the people who are waiting for your lecture there are tours for you and I never have been have no preparation at all and so I have to speak in, in English for two hours and it was certainly a very very difficult experience for me but I've read a lot of English I've known the practice of English of English, and I think that it was very important for me because I discovered that I was able to to speak. I think that it was difficult for me, and certainly much more difficult for the American students who were exposed to my English for two hours and then spent eight hours speaking with me after that. After that time, yes, I visited several times Canada, French Canada, but I uh, traveled in North America. I was invited by the Royal Geographical Society to visit some British university in 1990. I was invited in New Zealand, in Australia, and so if, and in the States, and so I have uh, more and more experiences of the British, American, Canadian, and Australian and New Zealand geography. Yes. So I think that I began to have perhaps not a world view of geography, but a view of what was going on in France and in some other European countries, mainly Italy, Spain, and Portugal, have some ideas of what was going on in Germany because of close relations with men, with people like Dietrich Bartels, and with some also Dutch geographers. And I read and I began to have the possibility to discover the British or American geographers, and from me, it was very interesting because when you are reading what is new, there is a delay. When you read a paper which is really new, it's so new that it's difficult for you to assess its real importance. And so it's better to have the possibility to meet the people, to ask them questions. And so after 1972, I think that it was easier for me to understand what was going on in the radical geography or in the phenomenological movement in North America or in Britain. And so yes. my ties were closer with the Anglo-Saxon geography after yes. 1972. Yes. Well, obviously you were, um, as we say, you were thrown into the deep end of the pool to learn English and you survived and swam with English in the Anglophone world, as you do in international conferences. And I would like to ask you um, what, over the last uh, decade or so, a rather close following of uh, what you might call generally Anglo-Saxon, uh, Lala de Gaulle and uh, geography, uh, 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 what is your opinion of it in relation to French geography? 
I think that um, there was a lot of interest in among French geographers in the kind of developments which were important and significant in America or in Britain. But I think that the attitudes were different for different reasons. In the field of radical geography, the French geographers had an experience of Marxism in the late 1950s. And so they were, they were generally skeptical about the new Marxist developments. And so the importance of radical geography was lesser than it was elsewhere. French geographers are, are an interest in inequalities and equality, that the same curiosities, but they didn't think that Marxist theory was good to provide a, an, an efficient framework for geography. So it's one of the differences. And the other difference is that we are a bit skeptical about pure phenomenology. We are speaking of l'espace vécu, the lived experience of space. And I think that we have an interest in more collective way of perceiving the things, more interest in the cultural determination of perception than on the personal experience of peculiar, of particular individuals. And we had the feeling that the geography in America and in Britain was very rich with a lot of experiences. But at the same time, we got the feeling that it was more a juxtaposition of different fields without unifying yes. themes. And I think that by now, after 20 years of crisis, 20 years during which it was necessary to look for new ideas, to build new methods, it's possible to move back to the traditional themes of geography, but with a deeper understanding of the reasons, of the causes, of the general framework of explanation. And so I think that it's possible to build something which is a new geography. And this new geography is not an economic one. It's not built only on quantitative methods, just like people were thinking in the 1960s. It's a social geography, because we are dealing with people, we are dealing with groups, but social geography is not enough because the individuals have values and so it's necessary to look at the values, at the culture. And I think that the evolution of geography is a three steps evolution from geography as a natural science in the 1950s still to geography as a social sciences in the 1960s with the deep involvement in economics and in sociology. In the 1970s, I spent a lot of time trying to import in geography what was produced in sociology and in uh, anthropology, and I'm now working much more in, on anthropology, and it's significant for geography. And the last period, the third phase, is a phase in which we're dealing with the values, that is, humanistic geography. And I think that it's possible to, uh, to have a, a more a better structure of view of geography in this way. <coughs> yes. Well, that's certainly what you, I think, if I remember rightly, you end up in the book that you and Johnston jointly edited on international geography now, um, that you ended up with that a trilogy or a succession from physical to social to uh, geography as a humanity. Well, I've also heard you say that um, uh, perhaps there's a, there's a kind of circle here that you come back now, perhaps in French geography, to the tradition modified by uh, subsequent events. Yes, uh, we are coming back to uh, an interest in the different cultures and the different regions. But I think that in the 1950s, we are still thinking that the physical environment was the major components in the explanations we could provide. And by now, I think that we are looking much more in the history, in the values. So I think that it's a circle, but it's much more a spiral. Yes. We are moving 
around the same themes, but at the yes. same time there is some progression, progression of methods, yes. and it's the reason for which I'm rather optimistic on the evolution of human geography during the next years, at least when I'm trying to compare human geography to the other social sciences. I think that the epistemology of human geography was not uh, well established, well founded at the beginning of the 1960s, and the feeling of a crisis. I think that this feeling is no more, um, it's, it was uh, an important, uh, important of this uh, kind of attitude 20 years ago. I think that by now it's more important just to build a new geography out of the parts which were developed during the last 20 years. And so I'm more optimistic. And in France, the image of geography among social geographers, which has deteriorated, which was not a very good one in the late 1960s and in the 1970s, is by now better than it was 10 years or 15 years ago. So you well, it, it, to, to, to sum up my perception is of you as, as a mitigated optimist. I know you are a very uh, careful person, generally, uh, weighing your words, um, and there is a great deal of um, pessimism among geographical circles, I think, at least in America, where I am now. Uh, but I'd like to ask you how you see the, the practical future and prospects for geography in France, including its image and its impact on the general public? Yes, I think that if the situation of geography among the social sciences is better, its situation in the academic, academic world is not so good for many reasons. In France, like in America, universities are poorer yes. than they were 15 years ago, and there are there is a necessity to um, to save money and I think that a discipline with a tradition in humanity is more vulnerable than a tradition uh, discipline which is much more hard harder and I think it's one of the problem of geography in France I think that within the next few years the possibility of further expansion will be uh, at stake. I am not sure of the issue. I think, for example, that in the world of publishing, it's more difficult to have books on geography published than 20 years ago, because the, it's necessary to sell more copies, and the market for geography books is a stable one, and so it's more difficult for us. So there are some um, dark side in the situation. I think that geography will be certainly different. I think that a good deal of it will be sold in the universities, in other departments than in the departments of geography. For example, we have new curricula in France for developing the ability to deal with special problems. And in this curricula, geographers, economics, urbanists are working together. And I think that it's certainly in this, on this line that geography will survive. And it's difficult for geographers to make the jump to this new situation. I think that in some ways the situation in America is not so different. And I, when you are speaking of the disappearance of geography in such departments as Chicago, I think that it's possible in America because we are in a more flexible structure. But when you see in France the reduction of the place given to geography in some institutions, it's really... How is it in the schools, for instance? In, in the, the schools, school. and in the high school, the place of geography is still important. There was some plans in the 1970s to reduce this importance, but fortunately for us, in France there is a close association between history and geography. And at the time when it was decided to reduce the time devoted to history, 
all the political men in France, from the right or from the left, began to think that it was uh, certainly not a good thing, and so geography was saved because history was saved. Yes. And I think that geography is not in very good position. But until now, it was not. It was decided that if there have to be more geography, more history, there will be also a bit more geography. Yes. So the situation in the schools is, until now, not so bad. Well, you should comfort yourself that relatively it's, that is much better than the United States, where there is really no geography in most high schools, but there is history, and it hasn't helped. The history has somehow swallowed geography, but not made use of it. And so there's a real problem, which is not the French problem. I think. Yeah, I think that it's very important to have these kind of possibilities, and many of our students uh, are teaching geography. But at the same time, the university is linked to the programs of the secondary schools who have to prepare our students to be teachers. It was the only possibilities offered to them until 15 years ago. By now it's a bit different. It's possible for them to work in planning agencies. But as a result, I think that the adaptation of French geography to newer trends, to new opportunities, was certainly um, less quick. And a good deal of the conservatism of French geography in the 1960s is linked to the place of geography in the secondary school. The secondary school teachers have a view of geography which is difficult to change. And so it's a process of about 20 or 30 years to change this view of geography when you have to change the view of the majority of teachers in the secondary school system. And so it's a mitigated advantage yes. to have a strong position in the secondary school system. Mm -hmm. But one of the major aspects of this importance is that there is an interest in the general public in France for places. It's not really geography, but it's an interest in the local hearts and the differences of in the landscapes. And when you look at the way people travel in France, I think that there are more geographers as travelers than many people elsewhere. And when we compare tourists in places like Costa Brava, the behavior of the different nation in the same place is different. And in my experience, French tourists are spending much more time looking at the different places and visiting different uh, possibilities than the majority of uh, other European tourists. And so I think that it's one of the major results of the, the major achievements of the French geography. Yes. Well, that's very interesting because we've heard in this Barcelona conference a lot about the uh, uh, the influence and delayed influence of such things as the Geographie Universelle from previous times in France, uh, it, there is still a latent need for that which might be in a new guise um, uh, made very accessible and even exciting to the public. Problems and different parts of the world and really lively topics. With I think that yeah. it's, it is a possibility, and some of the, some of the French colleagues, more specifically Roger Bruni, yes. is launching a new venture mm -hmm. in Géographie Universelle, yes. and I hope that it will be a good occasion to develop a new conscience of what is geography among yes. the general public. But we have to wait for yes, the, yes. Well, the way these new series will be received by the yes. general public. And do you think of geography in the future as, in France as primarily uh, an educational cultural subject or more an applied uh, practical subject? I think that the both faces of the both faces of geography are important in the f future. In the universities, I think that applied geography will, will be certainly more important because when we got students, they want to have a job. And so it's difficult not to deliver something which is useful for their life. But 
more and more we're spending our time for um, the kind of um, education continue, the yes. kind of Continuing permanent education, education yes. which offer yes. us a lot of opportunities to explain what is humanistic geography. Yes. And I think that uh, this kind of teaching is more and more uh, important and a good deal, perhaps 20 or 30 percent of the time in the French departments of geography is by now defaulted to this type of teaching. Yes. And it's certainly much more humanistic view on the world and the comparisons of the different civilizations which is popular at the problem for that type of teaching than the more technical uh, ways of presenting geography. So I think that the, both of the orientations will develop, but at different level. In the departments of geography, the technical skills will be certainly prominent in the next few years. And what about the, the uh, undoubted French tradition, which is still there, of um, literary uh, geography, let's say the Vidal's Tableau de la Géographie de la France, which was very, very popular among a wide range, it's still there. And if it's excited, if the public is excited, do you think that geographers can rise to the occasion and provide the product? Unfortunately, I think that the standards in French writing is by no lower than it was uh, 30 years ago. Some geographers are thinking that it's very important. And as I'm growing older and older, I'm spending more and more time on the way I'm writing my, my text, because I think it's a privilege to, be, to have the opportunity to, to be published. Yeah. And so I'm spending more and more time in writing and yes. writing. And I know many of my colleagues with such an interest, but I think that Really, there are few French geographers who are really with a literary mind. Some people of this orientation, like Frémont, who has written beautiful texts on French peasantry. People like Tissier, who has an interest in the kind of geography which was practiced by a novelist. For example, Julien Grac, who is a very well-known novelist, but he is also a professional geographer and some of the best French written by geographers was written by French Canadians. For example, by Luc Bureau. His French is a fantastic one. And so I think, I think that we have to look to the mm. French written by Canadians, mm. by West Africans, by Arabians, sometimes mm. are by writing a better French than we do. Yes, I know how it is. Um, well, you've certainly made use of the privilege, as you put it, of uh, publishing, uh, written a very great many um, books um, that have uh, come out over the last tw 20 years and have influenced a great many people, and more and more in the Anglo-Saxon uh, world as well as the uh, European Fran and French world. Uh, and I would like to ask uh, what uh, plans do you have um, for future writing? Well, I think that it's important to provide the public with views on geography which are more accessible than the general statements on the discipline. And so I'm working on an essay on what is the, what are the specificities of the North American space. It's a kind of regional geography, but it's different of the way regional geography was written on 40 or 50 years ago. So I'm working on this essay. I hope that it will be published within the next 18 months. And on a more academic field, I think that there is a research frontier in the field of cultural geography. And so I'm working on cultural geography. I'm working also on an essay on the history of human geography before the birth of human geography at the end of the 18th century. What were the ways uh, the people developed in the 16th, 17th and 18th century to plan, to colonize, to build houses, to build gardens, to, to have something which will be used by man 
what kind of criteria were used to give authority to the councils which were given by the different peoples. And so it's the kind of things which are of interest for me, but it's not very easy to find evidence, and so it's uh, asking me much more time yes. than I thought when I well, in, this that, in that context, I know that you are an admirer of Fernand Braudel. Um, is it that yeah. kind of thing that you wish had been done by a geographer rather than a historian, but I think he's a geographer too, perhaps? He was a geographer, and his last book, Identité de la France, is yes. an essay on the historical geography of France yes. and on the significance of this history for Frenchmen. I think that we have to try to develop this kind of uh, humanistic view on, uh, on geography if we yes. wish to gain more influence among the the cultivated yes. elite in France. And I think that it's a good idea for us to look at the way people like Duby or Brodel are writing essays, are writing books. They are so well written and so interesting that they manage to give a larger and larger audience, yes. bigger, broader and broader audience to geography, yes. to historical geography, to history. Yes. And it's up to us to develop the same kind of experience by now. Right. Would you also include uh, Le Roi Ladouri, Montaillou, that kind of thing, yes. to some extent? Yes, and I think that uh, when I'm speaking with Le Roi Ladouri, it, told, it tells me, it told me that um, what is perhaps more significant in present-day society is the test for the local things, for the local scale, and I think that a renewed interest in monographs, not the kind of passepartout monographs which were developed in the 1930s, but the kind of imaginative monographs which were produced, for example, by Le Roi Ladurie in Montaillou, will be helpful for us. Yes. Unfortunately, very few geographers have an interest in this kind of uh, monograph, except perhaps when they're dealing with West Africa, with the Pacific Islands, and there are good studies by people yes. like uh, Bon Maison on yes. the Pacific Islands. I think that yes. some geographers are developing these orientations. Yes. Well, I think that, um, that that is a very full discussion that we've had, and it's basically a very uh, potentially optimistic uh, yes. scenario that you do paint. and. It seems that uh, you would agree that geography um, has a need for it, that the problems are becoming geographical in our lives all the time, and need to know the world, is, uh, and to need to know back into history, what places were like, and so on. All of these things are not something that can disappear very easily, and that uh, the French tradition, suitably modified, will be ready for the task, is that... Uh, uh, I have this feeling, I think that in the 1960s, with the progress of techniques, we got the feeling of the world becoming more and more uniform, and we discover that it's not sufficient to have the same kind of car to have something which is uh, uniform. We have people are building new, a new sense of identity, they try to develop, to develop their, their feeling of identity in stressing the differences between one place to the other. It means that geography is significant, and perhaps, perhaps more significant now than it was 20 or 30 years ago. It's one of the reasons for which I'm op relatively optimistic for geography, because geography makes more sense for the general public, mm -hmm. but we have to show it to, show. to the yes. general public. Well, that is the paradox, it seems, uh, not only in France, but certainly in America, that the problems are becoming geographical more and more, and people recognize them when they are told about them. But before they are told about them, they have not thought, at least in America, that they are geographical, and they get very interested. So it becomes a matter of instruction, education, and by example. And uh, 
Yes, it's people true. like you are in the vanguard of leading the new um, uh, the new attack uh, on to become uh, uh, part of public awareness. I think it's one of the major f aspects in the evolution of geography. Yeah. More and more geography in the uh, daily life of the yes, majority of people yes. and less consciousness of what could, could be afforded by the geographical discipline. It's our major problem, not so different in France and in the United yes, States. Yes, yes. Well, I thank you very much, uh, Paul, for this very illuminating um, talk and I think encouraging too. Thank you very thank much, you. David. Right.